Hello everyone, welcome to the ranting shop with me, Melissa. And today is a bit rainy, so if you hear some noises in the background, it's a raining day today. So in today's episode, it's Ready to Love, Season 6, Episode 12, the finale episode. It has come to this and we've waited so long because we've not really seen many connections we've not really seen many magical moments in this episode so we're all happy this is coming to an end so last episode we saw that Cherise was telling Samson that he was not ready to love now in my mind I was thinking that Cherise would also self-eliminate but she didn't in that particular scene so in this episode we're gonna see what happens with Sherry's but we're starting off with Jamala and Randall it looks like the cast are having brunch and everyone is there including Sherry's and Kayla is sitting off to the side by herself and she's just observing people's actions and she's looking at Randall and she's realizing that for some reason Randall is kind of avoiding her now we all know it's because of Jamala and maybe it's because he wants to be more serious with Jamala but my thing about it is this is a process where you're dating multiple people if you want to be serious with Jamala simply tell Kayla that so that she'd stop expecting that something might happen with her and Randall it's that simple and do you guys see or notice how torturous And how so much worse it is for somebody to just hide the truth and keep you guessing versus them actually saying to you, hey, what's really going on? Granted, you can just watch their actions and make the assumption yourself, but still, it would be an assumption. It wouldn't necessarily be the fact of the situation. So, for Kayla, it's very annoying and I completely get where she's coming from. And not just Randall, she's seeing both of her connections, Mike as well, avoid her, so to speak. So, Kidian comes in and according to her, they've have, she and Swayze have been having communication issues. I just feel like Swayze does not want to be forced into making permanent decisions right now. And I don't blame him for it. And Kidian is feeling pressure from the show, pressure from Tommy, pressure from everyone to make him make a choice and say something definite. So I kind of understand both sides, but more so Swayze because realistically speaking, I'm not going to decide to make permanent plans and decisions with somebody that I've only known for a couple of weeks. It's just not realistic. You know what I mean? What I'm saying? So I get him. Argumentative is definitely the word I look for to describe Kadian and very confrontational. That is exactly what she is. Um, but considering we know that they're together now, it's kind of difficult for me to say it's not going to work or it might still not work even if they're together now, but it's difficult to say they're not going to get together or just let that go because they didn't let it go and they are together now. But what I will say is if it's so difficult so early on, then I It's just very difficult for people to look at their relationship and think it's going to be better moving forward. I'm happy that some of the women moved to where Kayla was because she was just sitting there by herself, observing, as she says, her interest, like being with their top connections. So we were all baffled as to why Cherise was still there. Well, I guess it was for her to announce formally that should be taking herself out of the process and that's no surprise to anyone so i'm a little like annoyed that some people were acting like oh my god oh my god she's taking herself out like the obviously she would she has no other connection nobody's interested in cherries there would be no sense in her staying so she informs the group as to what happened with samson and she makes this speech about letting the person know like where you stand don't essentially 
be taken for a ride. Like, stand your ground, don't settle, um, do what's best for you, essentially. And then she, with that, she decided to take herself out and she's going to be out, obviously. And um, she kind of looks in this episode like the Joker because of the way her lips are shaped and the, the red lipstick. It made her, I think it was too strong for her um, complexion. But moving forward. So, Kadian decided she has something to say as well. And she invites Swayze up as well. Kadian feels as if she, when she wants to get down to the serious questions, he doesn't want to, like, reach on it. He doesn't want to speak on it. I think he just wants to enjoy the dating phase, the fun phase, the getting to know each other phase. She wants to, like, move past that and rush into serious talk. Um, still... I'm on his side. And then he's like, you're argumentative. I don't want to always be somebody that wants to argue and stuff like that. I don't know if she she is argumentative, but she's also, I guess, reaching on topics that he's not ready to talk about. That's simply what it is. One is ahead of the other. That's it. You, you see what Swayze did? He said, you're not my wife. So why am I having to keep arguing with you you're just my friend and that's what she does not seem to quite understand you're just a friend you guys are just getting to know each other yeah you've kissed maybe you've had sex before whatever the case may be you shouldn't have if you knew your feelings were gonna be intertwined with his so early you know that's why they, they tell women to wait not because they feel like women should be chased and should should have a certain thing about themselves but more so because women get their feelings intertwined with sex and men don't and so when it's early on in a relationship and you're jumping to the sexual aspect of things your natural inclination as a woman is to go ahead and ask questions like what are we now are we serious what are we doing let's have a plan let's see how we're gonna move forward these are what women are thinking because sex is higher, highly regarded as a woman. But as a man, he's thinking, oh, he's just having some casual sex. It is what it is. And he can detach his feeling. So I think that's what it essentially is. Kidian is up there sweating bricks. So as he was like, he's not willing to work anything out with Kidian. And granted, they just had a fight a couple, just a day before. So obviously, they're coming in this in this particular day with the same emotions so it's not necessarily the best time to make final decisions because you're speaking with heightened emotion and we all know that emotion is sometimes irrational you know and it makes us do irrational things so that may not have been the best time for him to express his feelings as to how they'd be moving forward but he did because he was asked in that moment and he said he didn't want to move forward and so kdn is obviously she has no choice but to not to to agree with him and not move forward so yeah so now we're left with two men and three women the two men have made it very clear that their strongest connections are not Kayla. So for me, being Kayla, I would have taken <clears throat> myself out of that process and made it easier for them to make their choice. It would have been boring for viewers to see, but I would not subject myself to that amount of embarrassment. You know what I'm saying? But she's sticking in there. And I feel like it's partially because producers are telling her to stay and just stay there. Anything might happen. She doesn't know. And so she's just hanging on to faith. So the for the people that are left, and Kayla said something about, oh, she hopes. Like she's not one of them that ends up leaving disappointed. I'm sorry to tell you, sis, but it's not looking good for you. It's not looking good for you, okay? Now, first off, the guys are going to 
you know, after women meet their siblings, family members, whatever the case may be, starting off with Mike, who's going to have the women meet his brother. We also have Randall, who's going to have his brother meet Kayla and Jamala. So Kayla is describing to the brother that essentially she didn't really let the spot go, but he moved on to somebody else. And I somewhat agree. I definitely feel like he just found more in common with Jamala than he had with Kayla. And now we have Mike um, meeting with Brandy first. On the side of Randall and Kayla, she is frustrated that he's not giving a straight answer, but she's also not giving a straight answer. So essentially, it's like, who's the one to lay their cards down first? She doesn't want to be the one to be placed in an even more vulnerable position than she already is in. And the thing about Kayla is that even though she technically is in a very vulnerable position, it like she still wants to maintain that type of in the in how do i describe it she still wants to maintain that in control type of um demeanor but she is not in control and i feel like she's fighting she's really fighting and i only see it as a losing battle so she looks kind of ridiculous like i don't know about that and then we have Miss Brandy, who's never been in a serious relationship, and the brother is, like, questioning it, like, okay, so what is it about you? Like, what did you do wrong? And she's saying, well, according to the guys, they're saying that it was never me, it's them. And so I feel like it's, it speaks to her lack of self-awareness, like, what she, maybe the problem is she keeps picking people that are not good for her or people she knows that are not gonna that she doesn't see long term in that sense it is your fault because you're inviting that energy into your space you're you're choosing to accept it you know so in a sense it's like you're also creating the disappointment and you're creating the situationships because you're agreeing to them so brandy feels like mike could be her king well let's see about that according to an interview i saw with sharice she made it clear that he is an adult entertainer i don't know which female that's gonna be okay with their man entertaining other women you know so that's gonna be an uphill battle child like overall the randall and killer situation i just feel like it's done but they don't want, he doesn't want to say it, she doesn't want to say it because it's still a game and they're still trying to make it to the end. So they're just hanging on to whatever was in the beginning. But I feel like they both know that at this point, there's no chance there. But they, as I said, they don't want to say it. Can we talk about why Valley packed this woman's car so close next to another car and leaving so much space by the like other guys just looking crazy how is she gonna come out of that situation anyway the girl literally had to struggle to get into the um the the driver's side of the car that's crazy it's very interesting that for meeting parents mike was nervous about meeting brandy's parents more right but when it comes to meeting his brother, he's more nervous about Kayla meeting his brother than he was Kayla meeting Brandy. That's crazy to me. It's possibly because his brother knows him more than anything. So his brother can give the most accurate assessment. And he's afraid the brother would like Kayla more because... In a certain sense, he would like Kayla more. However, now we're realizing that what's preventing him from really choosing Kayla is for one, he knows that she's not somebody that he can control. Two, it's not somebody that will easily want to change their life around him. Three, it's, it's somebody that grew up with a certain level of wealth that he doesn't know if he's able to provide to her so all in all what that speaks to me is he's killer makes him insecure killer puts his insecurities in his face so he can face it 
and uh, for a lot of people it's not the most comfortable thing to be a part of it's not the most comfortable situation to constantly be faced with for brandy it's easier he doesn't have to consider all of these things which is why he wants to choose her instead mike made sure he got kayla her pinot grigio which is hilarious <laughs> jamala comes in and she's talking about the situation at the getaway again and why she acted that way and she said it that she feels emotionally tied to randall so early on you're already emotionally tied to randall and already feeling a certain kind of way when another woman lays her hands on him that's possessiveness let's just call it what it is you're possessive you want him for yourself you don't want anybody to have him you're possessive Kayla spoke about her background coming from georgia going to an hbcu um and her just being i guess a uh, all around her because she said she does everything um She's into family legacy, even creating a family crest, which we know, like, mostly rich people do that kind of stuff, like having a family crest. And in some instances, that reinforces why he feels like he's not exactly what Kayla would want. Did Mike just get, just say that? her speaking about things he's never experienced before is what turns him on about Kayla. That's crazy. I suppose the thing with Jamala is she's more sure that it's Randall that she wants versus Kayla who is basically in a position where I feel like she thinks whoever picks me, I'm going to pick you. I feel like that's essentially where she is and it can go either way. That's why she's not definite about who she wants. She's not in a position to really be definite. You guys, maybe Jamala misspoke, but she just called Randall inauthentic. Inauthentic means not sincere, not genuine, not in fact what you said you are. So I'm confused. That's not a good thing. It must have been that she misspoke. Or maybe that's really how she feels about Randall. That's why she's so possessive. So Mike's brother likes the fact that Kayla sees more potential in Mike. You know, because it's like it shows you that you can go places with her. You can, you can transcend with her. You can move with her. With Brandy, it's like, you don't really get that kind of vibe. You more so get, you're going to be where you are, but you're going to be comfortable. She's going to take care of you. You're going to, you know, it's just two different type of vibes. I'm so through with Randall talking about he confused. You are not confused. You know exactly who you want. Stop talk. Stop trying to confuse us. Like, we're not dumb. So he goes out with Kayla again. You guys, Kayla cutting that stick mad aggressive. It's making me laugh. It is so funny. It's like she's putting all her frustration and annoyance in cutting that stick. And it's like sending me to space right now. This woman had to do all this fidgeting with the stick and everything like that for you to simply tell her you're not interested in her. And the way you said it was so terrible like it's so mean like couldn't you have said that in a better way like i have stronger connections with jamala or something of that sort for you to tell her i'm not picking you i find was rather aggressive and i didn't like that because she didn't really deserve that type of the way that you laid that truth out that was something so no surprise to any of the viewers jamala and randall choose each other mike and brandy choose each other and i guess kayla had no choice but to walk away um nobody's surprised there do i think mike is an awesome catch not really do i think randall is the perfect catch no i don't think none of them are perfect let's see what's gonna go down in the reunion so Jamala and Randa are still working through. It sounds like they're still going through 
similar issues probably what when it comes to insecurities on jamala's part maybe they don't connect as far as their style of communication is concerned and we saw that in the show randall is super laid back and jamala is more outspoken and more like quick to get emotional about certain things in a sense it might it can work and in a sense it doesn't work because it's just two completely different styles of communicating then we see Kadian saying that she doesn't apologize for whatever she said about um, Shakira. Shanika's joking about sharing her time with LJ with other women. Kadian and Cherie's going at it, talking about slapping each other. It for sure looks way more entertaining than watching that entire season because it was truly tragic. We really didn't see any genuine love connections and as much as jamala and randa were like oh we love we like each other and brandy and michael like oh we like each other we didn't really see we couldn't touch it we couldn't feel it we couldn't experience it it's like just people saying words oh she's my number one she's my number one let's get together the end in previous episodes we could feel it we could see it we could taste it in these this particular season it wasn't that same feeling it was more so let's band together to make it to the end you know even we see that even randall and jamala don't seem happy and we didn't see much about they didn't really put much of mike and brandy which makes me feel like either they're fine or maybe maybe they're gonna leave that as like a surprise for us to guess how that turned out um, and I'm curious to see, but what do you guys think about this this season? Do you think it was all that? Do you think it was meh? Do you think they should cancel this whole show? Or do you think they should just look for older couples? Because people felt like older couples would be more serious. Not necessarily. Because in this show, they've had 50-year-olds, they've had 40-something-year-olds. Still, they still were not serious. So I don't think an older cast would necessarily garner better results. I just feel like choosing people that genuinely want love, they genuinely want to be in a relationship, is important. That is what is the most important. And if you're going to say, okay, let me go scouting for people, you cannot expect to find genuine people who are really interested in finding love you know because you're going out looking for people who never wanted to be a part of the process you know what i'm saying so i think the most important thing is getting people that genuinely want it or not even getting them but allowing them to come to you as opposed to jumping and finding them that's the biggest difference you know maybe more people signed up in previous seasons than in the most recent seasons where they've actually had to go looking for these people anyways you guys let me know what you think in the comment section like subscribe and see you guys next time for another episode the not the reunion episode which is always fun see you next time Bye-bye.